ladies and gentlemen, my name is Brian Awesome. And welcome to the Brian Awesome Show. Now today on the Ryan Awesome Show, I'll be talking about AEW Dynamite for March 17th, 2021 on a St. Patrick's Day, the St. Patrick's Day Slam. That was the theme of the show, the St. Patrick's Day. And overall, man, it was a very, very good show, man. I love, love the main event. You know, the unsanctioned match with Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker, which I thought was the best match on the show. You know, it wasn't it wasn't a perfect show. There were there was stuff on the show I didn't agree with. But overall, man, it was it was a great show. You know, the MJF in uh in his new stable. I like that stuff too. But I'm gonna get into it when it, when we get through the show. And so yeah, this is the AEW Dynamite review for March 17, 2021 on D Ryan Awesome Show. And if you haven't done this already, man, hit the thumbs up, man. What are you waiting for? Hit the thumbs up. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And right next to that subscribe button, there's a bell. Make sure you click on that bell so you'll be the first ones to know when my next video will come out. Because I'm here each and every single week. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out. And so, yeah. So, yeah, first off, man, we started off the show with MJF and his new stable. You had MJF, Wardlow, FTR, that's Cash Wheeler and Dax Harwood with Tully Blanchard and Sean Spears. They all came out. With, in a jet, in a private jet. They came out of the private jet. They ca that was outside. They came out of the private jet and they walked into a limo. And that was it. They were dressed up in a nice suits and stuff and they went inside the limo. So that was it. So yeah, that was that was a beautiful sight, man. And so yeah, our first match on the show was Pentagon Jr. versus Cody Rhodes with Aaron Anderson in his corner. You know, this is this is a great match, but I did not did not agree with the end did not agree with the end of the match, but I'm gonna get into that. And so yeah, we had Pentagon he dove on Cody Rhodes outside the ring while Cody he was making his entrance. And then you know they were fighting outside. We had chops to Cody, and then Pentagon he had another chop on Cody and they fired him up. So Cody Rhodes was fighting back. He slammed Pentagon, and then we had Pentagon he had a sling blade on Cody and then Cody he kicked out. And then Cody Rhodes hit an uppercut on Pentagon. And then at one point we had Pentagon hit an over the top, over the top rope. Not an over the top rope, but yeah, I guess you can say that. Over top over the top rope backstabber to Cody Rhodes. And then at one point, you know, Pentagon and Cody Rhodes, they were outside the ring. And you had Pentagon, he grabbed like he had grabbed like a guardrail from the from the crowd. Somebody had handed him a guardrail that was laying on the ground in the crowd. And so he picked it up. And he draped it. He draped it on the guardrail. And so, yeah, he didn't use it at that point. But it ended up being used later on. So he, he draped it on the guardrail. And so we had Cody Rhodes. He gave a pump kick to Cody. A pump kick to Pentagon. And then they went back into the ring. They were fighting. And we had a top rope hurricane around to Pentagon. And then at one point, throughout the match, we had Pentagon. He was targeting Cody's bad shoulder. The taped up shoulder. And so, yeah, so Pentagon, he was targeting the shoulder. And then Cody Rhodes, he targets Pentagon's leg, you know, so he can set up for the figure four leg lock. And then we had Cody Rhodes, he had a disaster kick to Pentagon. And then we had a tope suicida to Pentagon on a guardrail from Cody, Cody Rhodes from earlier. With that guardrail, that, that draping guardrail to Cody Rhodes, he had a tope suicida to Pentagon on, on the guardrail. And then we had a super kick followed up by a Canadian store. A Canadian destroyer, excuse me. Uh, yeah, a Canadian destroyer. Follow up by a Cody cutter to Pentagon and Pentagon he kicked out. And then we had a crossroads. Cody Rosie had hit his finishing move, the crossroads to Pentagon, and Pentagon he kicks out. And I thought that was it right there. And then Cody Rose he had another finishing move. Not his finishing move, but it was the vertebraker. The vertebraker to Pentagon and he kicked out. And then Cody Rhodes, he slammed Pentagon's leg into the ring post at one point. And then Cody Rhodes, he locked in the figure for a leg lock. And then Pentagon, he grabbed the rope. And then, you know, Cody, he tried to lock in the figure for a leg lock again. 
and then Pentagon he he fought out of it and then he snapped Cody Rhodes' arm. And then, you know, after that, you know, Pentagon he was going for something and then Cody Rhodes he had reversed it. He had rolled up Pentagon for the one, two, three, and that was it. So Cody Rhodes he beat Pentagon and that was it. And so yeah. And so yeah, after the match he had Cody Rhodes, he was he was celebrating and then after the match, Pentagon he attacked Cody Rhodes. You know, he was beating him down. And then yeah, Arn Anderson, he got in the ring. He didn't he didn't do anything. But the gun club they had came in the ring. You had Billy, Billy Gunn. Not Billy Gunn, you had Austin Gunn and his brother came in the ring. And, and you know, they chased off Pentagon and then Dustin Rhodes had came out and you know and you know the the entire nightmare family was out there, you know, trying to help Cody Rhodes. And so and then you had Q T Marshall. You had Q T Marshall Q T Marshall, another member of the Nightmare family, he came out last. You know, after everything was done, he came out last. And so everybody was wondering, man, where you been? Like, where you been? And so QT, he was like, I was in the back. I was in the back. I was busy. And so, yeah. And and that was it, man. You know, great match. Great back and forth between Cody Rhodes and Pentagon. But, dude, I did not agree with the ending, man. Pentagon should have won. Pentagon should have won a match. Co- like, it's like Cody Rhodes, man. It's at that point, man, where people are getting tired of Cody Rhodes, man, because he keep winning and winning and winning. It's like, <laughs> it's like every match that he's in, he's always he always win. Like, like dude, he don't always need to win, man. He like dude is bulletproof. He can take a loss. If he take a loss, it's not gonna hurt him. It's it's Pentagon that can't lose because you know they they built him up last week. They was building them building them up, and you have him lose, man. Yeah, I like dude. I didn't. I didn't like that, man. I did not like that. They should have had Pentagon win. And so yeah, man, that was it with that. Great match, but Pentagon should have won that match. And so yeah, right after this, we had Alex Marvez. He interviews the Young Bucks. And so, yeah, he interviewed the Young Bucks. That's Matt and Nick Jackson, who are the AEW World Tag Team Champions. And this is what they have to say. singles competition last week and a year ago you beat my brother also in singles competition well luckily for us ray and pack these are world tag team championship titles you just so happen to be looking at the best damn tag team in professional wrestling wow that was great i mean that's oh, don callis interrupted almost sound like you believe that what are you doing here? what am i doing here what do you want? I, I i was worried about your dad you know i heard he got hurt and you guys didn't really do anything about it so i I brought him a t-shirt. I hope it makes him feel better. He can wear that in the hospital. Oh. <laughs> look at your eye. Oh, the eye? Okay. Yeah, look, 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 look. You're faking. Okay. I was faking. They never actually no. kicked me. Yeah, of course. But you know what? I wanted you to kick me. I wanted you to, even though it would have hurt. It would put me in the hospital just like your dad. I mean, I I wanted you to kick me because I wanted to see a little of that Young Bucks team, that Nick and Matt that I saw in Japan that would just destroy the competition, the once in the millennium tag team. And... You know, you guys kind of founded this place. It's all elite wrestling, and I've been here for a while, and there's really nothing elite about you guys anymore. I mean, killing the business is, is killing it, right? But you guys have killed your careers. I mean, you're letting everyone else take credit for everything around here. Kenny Omega doesn't yeah, even yeah, recognize Yeah, Kenny Omega. Anymore. Yeah, yeah, the guy you changed our best yeah. friend. At. What are you doing here anyway, right, Uncle Creepy? Right, what right, are you doing here? What right. do you want? Uncle back? Creepy. I did change Kenny. Kenny's changed. You know how he's changed? He's a god of pro wrestling. He was here, and now he's here, and you guys are down in the basement somewhere. Kenny doesn't recognize you because you're not elite anymore. You're just another tag team with fancy tights living off your name. So I want you to ask you one question before you guys get hot at me. If you look in the mirror at night, do you see the same Nick and Matt that I saw in New Japan? Think about that. And that was it, man. That was it from the Bucks and Don Callis. You know. And so, yeah, right after this, we had a match. And it was a squash match. It was Jay Cargill versus Danny Jordan. And so, yeah, we had a pump kick to Jordan. Follow up by a German suplex to Jordan. She she kicked up after that. And we had a glam slam to Jordan to win the match. And that was it from Jay Cargill, she won the match, and so right after the match, we had Jay Cargill and 
Red Velvet, they got into it. They were arguing, you know, at ringside. And, you know, that was it. You know, dominant performance from from Jade Cargill. And so, yeah, so, yep, that was it with that. Really much nothing to say about it. And so, yeah, right after this, we had MJF, Wardlow, FTR, and oh, Tully Blanchard and Sean Spears. They came out to the ring and they spoke about what they did last week. And so, yeah, this is the new stable, uh, AEW, and this is what they have to say. You know, it's great being in the middle of this ring with this group of guys. Because one week ago, we stood in here with the greatest group that AEW had, the Inner Circle. And then you saw Santana and Ortiz over here, handcuffed. And then you saw the tough guy, Jake Hager over here, with two champagne bottles. You saw Sammy over here, wearing a chair. And then right here, you saw their leader, the great Chris Jericho. And you saw this gentleman right here take a baseball bat and pop him. So I guess that makes this group the baddest group in AEW. So when you've climbed the mountain, and there is no place, you're at the pinnacle of this sport. And that's where we are. Years ago, 34 years ago, I was with the greatest group of guys in the history of professional wrestling. And I'm gonna finish my career with the greatest group of guys in professional wrestling. You can mark the words. And so that, yeah, that's what Tully Blanchard had to say. And so right after this, we had MJF. He grabbed the microphone. And this is what MJF had to say about the group. His new, you know, his new group. Blanchard was absolutely right. Oh. Tully Blanchard was absolutely right. Shocking, I know. He's only the greatest mind in the history of professional wrestling. When he called us the pinnacle. Pinnacle. Because that is exactly what we are. Ladies and gentlemen, look at this lineup. You might not like it, but you got to look at it. The War Dog, Wardlow. 278 pounds of sheer force and dominance. The best big man in professional wrestling today, Mr. Mayhem himself. And the best insurance policy professional wrestling has to offer. Double S, Sean Spears, the chairman. A wrestler's wrestler, a veteran's veteran. A man who has been held down for far too long, but not anymore. No, 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 not anymore. See? Sean Spears has always been a top guy, and he's going to prove it now, week in and week out. And if you got a problem with that, take it up to him. You're going to eat your words, and then you're going to eat a chair shot. <laughs> oh, man. And last but most certainly not least, Cash Money, Dax the Axe, FTR. FTR. The only Grand Slam World Tag Team Champions in the history of professional wrestling. That's right, that's right. The greatest tag team on God's green earth. Yes. And they look damn good doing it, baby. Yeah. And well then, then there's little old me. MJF. The guy who's only been on national TV for one year and is already the most talked about name in professional wrestling today. The guy who on this microphone and in this ring is absolutely unstoppable. And the guy who is only 24 years of age. I'm already great now, but baby, I'm like a fine wine. I'm only going to get better with age. 
I got 25 plus years left in the tank. And I bet that pissed you off, doesn't it? It makes your blood boil. It makes your legs shake. It makes you want to take your fist and put it right through your TV screen. Because deep down, you know that when my career is all said and done, Chris Jericho is not going to be the GOAT. No, 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 no. That spot is reserved for yours truly. We are the pinnacle. We are family. We will be the backbone of AEW for years to come. We will take every premier championship this great sport has to offer. And as the pinnacle, we will take what we want when we want. And right about now, Chris, you know what we want? I think we want your locker room. Oh. Oh, and Chris, before I take that and every single thing you hold near and dear to your heart in this world, week after week with me and my boys, allow me to say something to give you a little heartwarming message here. I hope I can, hope I can get it right, guys. It's been six months. I mean, see if I can get it over with. I'm better than you. And you know it. And that was it, man. That was it from the Pinnacle. So we finally got a name from the for the group. For MJF Stable, it's the Pinnacle. You know, cool name. I like the Pinnacle. And so, yeah. Love, absolutely love this segment, man. They going after all the gold. They want the gold, man. And, you know, I, I just can't wait. Just can't wait to see what happens with them next, man. You know, FTR, of course, they're going after the tag team titles. You know, the Good Brothers, I'm, I'm assuming that they're next. The Good Brothers, they're next, I'm assuming. Right after Ray Phoenix and Pac. And then right after the Good Brothers, man, we can see FTR. We can see a rematch with, with FTR and the Good Brothers. Not the Good Brothers. The Young Bucks and, the, and FTR, man. We can see a rematch with that. And I can't wait. And they should win. They should win those titles. They never should have lost those titles, man, to the Bucks. They should have had a longer reign, man. But I think it's about time that the FTR guys, they get their titles back, man. And so, yeah, that was it with that. And so, yeah, right after that, we had a 10-man tag. And it was Matt Hardy, Private Party. That's Isaiah Cassidy and Mark Quinn. And the Butcher and the Blade with the Bunny in that corner. Versus the Jurassic Express, Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus, Marco Stunt, and Bear Country. I still don't know the guy's name. I got one of them. One of them named Bronson. Yeah, Bronson and Bear. I think that's their name. Bronson and Bear. And so, yeah, I, I did not care about this match. I did not care about this match at all. And so, yeah, at one point we had Bear Country. They threw Marco Stunt over the top rope onto the heels. And so when they threw Marco Stunt, man, Marco Stunt, his face, I'm telling you this right now, his face almost hit the guardrail. It was this close, this close from hitting the guardrail. So that was, that, that was scary right there, man. And so, yeah, and then at one point we had Bear Country. They accidentally took out Jungle Boy while beating up one of the private party guys. And so we had a side effect to Jungle Boy from Hardy. And in the heels, they took control of the match by working on Jungle Boy. And then we had a hot tag to Luch Luchasaurus, took out everybody. You know, he was throwing around private party. And he had a choke slam to Cassidy, and he followed that up with a standing moonsault on Cassidy. And so, yeah, throughout the match, you had Jurassic Express and Bear Country, they're arguing with each other, you know, because they, 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 do, they do have tension. They do have heat because of the Bear Country. They eliminated Luchasaurus in the in that casino, not the casino, that tag team battle royale at Revolution. So that's where the tension rose. And so, yeah, they were also arguing about somebody making a tag. You know, I think one of the Bear Country guys had blind tag Marco Stunt or something like that. And so Luchasaurus, I guess... Thought that he got tagged, but one of the Bear Country guys had ended up tagging himself in. So that's what they were arguing about. And so we had Isaiah Cassidy and Mark Quinn. They hit the gin and juice to Marco's stunt. And so, yeah, they hit the gin and juice. And then Matt, he, Matt Hardy, he asked for the tag. He asked for the private party guys to tag me in. And so, yeah, he tagged in. He do, don't go for the cover. He does not go for the cover. But he picked up Marco's stunt, and he hit the twist of fate on Marco's stunt for the win. So that was it. So Matt Hardy, Mark Quinn, Isaiah Cassidy, 
butchering the blade. They won the match, and that was it. Really, really did not care about the match because I, like, I am not a fan. I am not a fan of the ten man tags and the twelve person tags. I'm just, I'm just not, dude. Not, not saying that the match was bad or anything. I just, dude, I don't care about these matches. You know, it's just, it's just too much, man. Just too much to, to handle. And so yeah, that was it with that. And so yeah, right after this, we had Eddie Kingston and John Moxley. They're backstage and they're talking about, you know, the Good Brothers. And this is what they had to say. Eddie asked me how I feel. Good. You were, you were, uh, we're like, we're we're like this. We're we're gonna gonna to how do you feel? Not good, Eddie. Mm. Not in a good mood. Okay. Not just because I got burned and lacerated, all that notwithstanding. Then I got handcuffed and beaten to a bloody pulp. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not feeling too good. I should be on a beach in a hot tub right now, sipping a Mai Tai. But instead, I'm going to war again because it's time to take care of my real problem. You know, sometimes you got to step back, take a look, and fix the real problem. We know what that problem is, don't we? Those good brothers. Yeah, brother. Everybody loves the good brothers. Yeah. Hey, Hoot. Oh, they're such a good time. Everybody loves the good brothers, baby. I don't. At all. I don't like them. At all. And not just because I wasted my money on talking shop of mania. I don't like them because they are cheap shot artists. I turn around this corner. There's Anderson and Gallows. I turn around this corner. There's Anderson and Gallows. Nobody wants to look at Gallows that much. No, no, no. I can't get his face out of my mind. His googly eyes. <laughs> you look like that Forky dude from one of the Forky, yeah, it's like a kid in the arts and crafts day where they get the construction paper and they glue like the eyes that wiggle, you know what I'm talking yeah, about? The wiggly That's eyes. what Gallows yeah, yeah, looks yeah. like. He's a wiggly eyed dude. What? But how about that other Bald dude? Head. He split his forehead open. Okay, okay. Oh, Chad, too okay. bad. Chad, too bad. Chad, too bad. Yeah, but now, but now he's a gangster, though, now, because he's part of this club, right? It's gangster. this. Well, yeah, i seen that before somewhere. It was on TNT, like, years ago, though. Years ago. I, I don't know. Chad's. Chad's. I know, but you know what? I got you, since you're in pain and you're angry. Now we're going to get serious for a minute. We can joke around and make all these jokes. Yeah, get serious, man. Are world champions and all over the world, but this ain't Tokyo. This ain't the impact zone. Mm. Nah, man, this is our place. This is our home. <laughs> and you know what, man? Let's be honest. I'm going to go a little 50 cent here. They never popped nothing, never shot nothing. So stop front. Yeah. Can we say bullet club on here? Is it legal? I don't know. I don't forbidden door and everything. Yeah, forbidden oh, door. Oh, like man. That. Forbidden door, forbidden door. But now since I use 50, I'm going to use Pac right now. Real simple, boys. You guys are cowards. And the coward dies a thousand deaths, but men like me and Moxie, soldiers, we only died but once. See you out there. And that was it. That was it from Eddie Kingston and John Moxley and what they had to say about the Good Brothers. And yeah, right after that, we had Dasha Gonzalez. She interviews Christian Cage. So this is the first time that Christian Cage, he speaks, you know, because he didn't get a chance to speak last week. So he finally get this week to speak. And so this is what he said. Christian Cage, I just wanted to ask you the question that has been on everyone's mind. What brought you to sign here with AEW? Now, Dasha, I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant here, but I promise you I will answer your question. There's a term in the wrestling business. For the type of wrestler that when they get in that ring on a nightly basis, no matter the situation, no matter the opponent, they bust their ass more than anybody else on the card. They're called a workhorse. And if you've ever been inside a pro wrestling locker room, then you know. You know my reputation. I mean, John Moxley said it himself. He said he thought he knew something about wrestling until he got in the ring with me. Hmm. I make wrestling better. I make wrestlers level up. But I'm not a workhorse. I am the workhorse in professional wrestling. And if anybody's forgot about that the past seven years that I've been gone, the second I step foot in the ring in AEW... You're going to remember pretty damn quick. You know, it's also got me thinking I might have ruffled some feathers here on the way in, you know. Great, the veteran with the big name is coming in to take our spot. Let me put your mind at ease. There's only one spot that interests me. And it's currently occupied by AEW World Heavyweight Champion Kenny Omega. And, and speaking of Kenny, last week on Dynamite he showed up and he scooped my time. 
Listen, when you're the champ, you can just do whatever you want. I mean, that's cool. I get it. But I wasn't mad because it gave me a chance to go out there and meet Kenny for the first time face-to-face -face and let him know, Kenny, as champ, you're on borrowed time. Now, I get it. I need, I need to get some wins. I need to prove myself. But, Kenny, I'll see you down the road. Trust me. Now, your question. Why am I in AEW? It's simple. I'm in AEW to cement my legacy. I'm in AEW to put to action three simple words. Outwork everyone. And that was it. That was it from Christian Cage and what he had to say. Now, one thing I do like about this is that he mentioned that, you know, in order to get to the top, I do have to get some wins. And so I, I did like that part. He, he's not going straight for the World Heavyweight Championship. He's got to get some wins first, just like what he said. Now, who's his first opponent? Who, who's his first opponent? I don't know. We're going to have to find out maybe next week. Well, 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 maybe next week or the week after that. We might find out in the next couple of weeks. But, yeah, that was it, man, from Christian. And his, on his quest for the AEW World Championship. And so, yeah, right after this, we had a tag team match. And it was John Moxley and Eddie Kingston versus the Good Brothers, Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson, the former, former Impact Wrestling World Tag Team Champions. And so, yeah, first off, we had Eddie Kingston. Yeah, Eddie Kingston, he was making his way to the ring. You know, making his entrance. And so, yeah, the Good Brothers, they attacked. They beat up Eddie Kingston from behind. And so, yeah, we had Moxley. He came out. He was running out. He, you know, he had his shoulder taped up and everything, you know, selling the effects of the death match. And so he was going, he was attacking the Good Brothers. And so they were fighting outside the ring. And then we had the Good Brothers, they hit the magic killer on John Moxley outside of the ring on the floor. And then, you know, the Good Brothers, they, they brought Eddie, Eddie Kingston back into the ring. And so the match, the, rail, the bell had rung and the match had started. And so, yeah, John Moxley, he was outside of the ring the entire time. Late, he was laid out. They laid him out. And so it was basically a handicap match. And so, yeah, the Good Brothers, they were working on Kingston. And then, you know, Kingston, he was trying to fight back, but it's not working. And, you know, Kingston, he finally, you know, got some offense. He had a diving shoulder tackle to Anderson. And then he had an exploder suplex, an exploder suplex to Anderson. And then we had a hot tag to Moxley. He hit clotheslines and a German suplex to Anderson. And then he had a shotgun drop kick to Anderson. And then Moxley, he gave Anderson a power driver. And then he went for the cover, and Gallows, he broke up the pin. And then we had a tope suicida to Gallows from Moxley. And then Carl Anderson, he gave Moxley a spine buster. And then we had the Good Brothers. They went for their, their signature tag team move, the Boot of Doom, to John Moxley. And then, you know, Eddie Kingston. Yeah, Eddie Kingston, he had, you know, went after the good brothers and then the good brothers had took him out and then we had a magic killer attempt yeah so the good brothers they tried to go for their magic killer and then eddie kingston he had broke it up again so he went right back at the good brothers and then the good brothers had took him out again and then we had john moxley he rolled up carl anderson for the one two three and that was it so eddie kingston and john moxley they won a match and so right after the match we had john moxley he was celebrating and he got attacked by the good brothers and so, yeah, they, they were beating up John Moxley. And then we had Kenny Omega, his music played. And so, yeah, his music played, and he was dancing to the ring. He was dancing to the ring with Don Callis by his side. And so, yeah, Omega, he had a chair in his hand. He had a chair in his hand, and he was dancing to the ring. He got into the ring, sat the chair. You know, he put the chair down, and he sat in the chair. You know, he was, he was about to do something. So, yeah, he sat in the chair. And so you had Eddie Kingston from behind. He just knocks. He knocks Kenny Omega off the chair. And so the Good Brothers, they attack Eddie Kingston. And they gave him a magic killer. And so, yeah, we had Omega and the Good Brothers. They wrapped, you know, Eddie Kingston's leg with the chair. And so one of the Good, good Brothers, they had jumped off the rope. And then had stumped on it. They had stumped on his leg. Stumped on the chair. So that, in, quote, unquote, injured his leg. And so, yeah, it didn't. You know, and then one of them tried to stomp on Moxley's neck. So, the, yeah, they had the chair wrapped around Moxley's neck. And so one of them about to jump off the, the rope and stomp on the chair on Moxley's neck. 
And so the the Bucks that came out, the young Bucks that came out to stop the Good Brothers and Kenny Omega. And so Omega and the Good Brothers and Callis, they try to give the Bucks the too sweet. Like, like, come on, man, it's too sweet me, too sweet me. And so the young Bucks, they said, no, no, we're not going to too sweet you. And they just left. They left the ring. And the Good Brothers and Omega and Callis, they're not happy about it. And so, yeah, they were arguing with the Bucks. And so you had Moxley, you know, he got up, he got up, grabbed the chair and started swinging the chair around. And so the Good Brothers and Omega, they got out the ring and that was it. That was it. You know, wasn't wasn't much of a tag team match because, you know, they took him out earlier in the, you know, before the match even started. And so, yeah, man, that, that was it with that. Oh, yeah. And the Bucks, man. I, I said this, I said this weeks ago that the good brothers they will be going after the bucks they, they, it, we might have a title match between the bucks and the good brothers and you know i don't i don't think the good brothers are winning the titles i don't think they're winning it those titles going to ftr so so i knew i knew there were the next challenges because you know they they had beef in the past and they never picked it up they never picked you know, they haven't went back to the, the beef that they had, but now, now it's going to, you know, the feud is starting again. And so, yeah, that was it with that. And so, yeah, right after this, we had Tony Schiavone. He interviewed Sting and Darby Allen. And so this is what happened. I won this TNT championship November 7th. 2020. You know how much times I defended it since then? Three. Three times. That's not good. No, 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 no. It's a joke. And now that everything is done with Team Taz, I want to be a defending champion week in and week out. And I want to start by paying tribute to the greatest TNT champion of all time. Brody Lee. If you want this back, step right up. It's an open challenge. And he won it for you. You've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. Uh oh. And that was Lance Archer. He interrupted. And so, this is why. Week after week. How many times are you going to interview Sting Shivani? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I take up your precious time? Actually, you know what? I don't give a rat's ass that I took up your time or anybody's time because it should be my time all the time. And Darby. Oh, Darby, you're the TNT champion? The internet might think you're terrific. But as far as I'm concerned, you're the biggest indie-rific joke this business has ever seen. Indie-rific? Oh, my God. Oh, and you like coffins so much. Well, I'm about to put your ass in one. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> yes. No, 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 no. You know, you're going to freeze your ass off, man. You better go back there and put your bun back on. You know, bun? Your hot dog bun. Because you ain't nothing but a weenie boy. A weenie boy? Oh, my God. Sting, you know me. You know better. So you're going to get what's coming to you. The winds of the change are coming. Tony Khan better realize you don't play with fire. This is the biggest, baddest son of a bitch and he will twist it up, and he will shove it up your rear ends. So be careful, boys. It's changing. And so, yeah, that was it from that part. And so, yeah. And then, yeah, we had Team Taz. They had came out. They had came out. They interrupted. And so Taz, he had the microphone. He was going to speak. And so Brian Cage... You know, the entire Team Taz group, they had came out, and we had Brian Cage. He had snatched the microphone out of Taz's hand. And so Brian Cage, he was like, Taz, I don't want you to speak for me right now. I can speak for myself. And so, yeah, he got in Sting's face, and he was like, you know, I respect you. You know, after after everything we've been through, man, I respect you. And so, you know, Team Taz, they were upset. They were, they were not happy with Brian Cage. Like They were like, dude, what are you doing? You respect him? Like, dude, what are you doing? And so, yeah, 
And so, yeah, they were arguing. Team Taz, they were arguing. So, Brian Cage, he just walked past Team Taz, and that was it. And so, yeah, man, Brian Cage as a babyface away from Team Taz? Uh, no, no. He he needs Team Taz. He needs Team Taz. He need he needs that mouthpiece, man. Taz was that great mouthpiece. And he, you know, he's the founding father. The founding father of Team Taz. Taz and Brian Cage. It started with Brian Cage. Why why are they breaking him up from Team Taz? I don't know. Why are they breaking him up away from him? From them? I really don't know. Now, my favorite part of this, you know, this segment was Lance Archer, man. Lance Archer. That's that's the Lance Archer that I want to see, man. I don't, I don't understand why they turned him into a baby face. But he came off like a heel tonight. He came off heelish. Saying that he was going to put Darby Allen in the coffin. Man, I, that, dude, that was freaking... Dude, I, I loved it, man. That's that's the Lance Archer I want to see, man. They, ne they never should have turned him into a baby face. So, yeah. So, now Lance Archer... He's he's in between. He's in between. But he's he's acting more heelish. So they need to turn him back into a heel, man. Because, like, he wasn't doing nothing. He was doing nothing as a babyface. Nothing. He feuded with Eddie Kingston and the Butcher and the Blade. That like, dude, that wasn't that wasn't good. And so it it's just I wasn't I wasn't a fan of him being a babyface. Dude, like Lance Archer, he reeks. He reeks heel. He looks like a heel. He he comes off like a heel. Like, dude, he needs to be a heel. He does not need to be no babyface. So I'm, I'm glad, man, he's acting heelish. He's, act, he's acting heelish. I'm glad that he's acting heelish. And so, yeah, man. And Brian Cage, on the other hand, am not a fan of him being a babyface. He needs to stay with Team Taz. And so, yeah, that was it from that. And so right after this, we had a vignette from Scorpio Sky. And so this is what Mr. Sky had to say. of AEW. They don't want me. They want the Cody's, the Darby's, the Stings. Mm. I've always been told that nice guys finish last. And I actually tried to be the exception to the rule. And I failed. Until Revolution. But it was never supposed to be my moment. And even if I got past that moment, it was just supposed to be another moment for Darby. It's never for me. And no more. I will not be a stepping stone again. I am a wrestling savant and i'm tired of acting like i'm not one of the best and if i have to hurt people to do it so be it oh oh so scorpio sky he is coming he is coming yeah he's gonna hurt people he's gonna hurt people man i'm loving it man and so yeah that was it from scorpio sky and so right after this we had a match it was ray phoenix with peck Versus Angelico of the Hybrid 2. And so, yeah. Didn't didn't know why this match was happening on the show. But, yeah. It was Ray Phoenix versus Angelico. We had an arm drag to Angelico. And then Angelico, he target, targets Phoenix tape lower back. So, his, his lower back was tape. It had athletic tape on it. And so, Angelico, he went right after it. And so, we had a super kick to Angelico. So, Phoenix, he was fighting back. He hit him with a super kick. And he followed it up with a, a cutter. And then Helico he kicked out. And so in Helico he locked in his submission move, the Navarro death row submission. And so Phoenix he quickly, he quickly grabbed the rope because he he was already you know, he already knew what was coming. And so he grabbed the rope. And so yeah, they were going back and forth with kicks. And then Phoenix he had a crucifix bomb to Helico and he followed it up with his finishing move, the Phoenix driver. And that was it. So Phoenix he wins. And so right after this, we had Alex Marbez, he interviews Miro. And so this is what he had to say. They were talking about, you know, the challenge that the best friends had made. And so this is what Miro had to say. Miro. Yeah, Marvez. Why he was working on work out. <laughs> but Chuck Taylor and Orange Cassidy have challenged Kip Sabian and you to a rematch. Why? What, what do you mean, why? Yeah, Charles, why, man? <laughs> why? He's be trying to sweeten up their deal by offering their lifetime butlership if they lose the match. But I'm not interested, Charles. The opportunity has moved on. I have moved on. Good. I've got better things to do now I, with my I, I haven't. I can't move on from this, Mirror. They ruined my wedding. Did you go fight them? You were supposed to care. Or are you blaming me for that? I'm not blaming you for that. But let's not forget the fact that whether you meant to or not, 
You pushed him into my wife. She's hurt. Well, now I'm really hurt myself. Hmm. If you think that tending to your wife is more important than winning a match, let me give you a piece of advice. The worst thing for your career is having your wife at ringside. <laughs> Coming from you. That. <laughs> Coming from now me. remember this. When that bell rings, I don't care about you. I don't care about your wife. I don't care about your family drama. I don't care about the opponent. All I care about is the destiny. It's my destiny. It's the achievement that I need to have. I need to be world champion, kid. I'm not going to stop you. I want that too. I want that for you. Outside the ring, we're still buds. Okay. That's good. So, do you two accept on Dynamite? Of course we accept. Oh. So he accepted the match. Accepted the match. And so, yeah. Just, just get this match over with, man. Just get this feud over with, man. I thought it was over at Revolution, but this match, need, this feud need to be over with, man. I'm like, I'm sick and tired of this. You know, the best friends they need to win this match. They need to win this match next week. Have Kip Sabian take the uh, the loss. Have Kip Sabian take the pin, and have Miro just unload on Kip Sabian, and you know, breaking them up for good. So this is what I want to see. This is what I want to see. And so yeah. That was it from that. And so, yeah, we had Alex Marvez again. He interviewed the Dark Order. And, you know, they were, he, he was talking about the challenge that Darby Allen made earlier about challenging the Dark Order to a TNT Championship match. And so it was any member of the Dark Order. So he was interviewing the members of the Dark Order. And they were wearing our green on St. Patrick's Day. And so they chose Johnny, Johnny Silver or John Silver, whatever you want to call him, Johnny Hungy. They chose him, and so it's going to be John Silver versus Darby Allin next week for the TNT Championship, which should be a, a great match. And so, yeah, and right after that, man, we had MJF. We had the Pinnacle. We had the Pinnacle. They they took the, the nameplate of the Inner Circle. They went towards the, the locker room. They went towards the Inner Circle's locker room, and they took the Inner Circle's nameplate off the, the door. And they replaced it with their their nameplate, the Pinnacle, and so that was it with that. And so next week's show for Dynamite, it is going to be. They only announced a couple of matches, so it's going to be the Pinnacle representing the Pinnacle. It's going to be FTR, Dax Harwood, and Cash Wheeler, and Sean Spears with Tully Blanchard in their corner versus the Varsity Blondes. That's Griff Garrison and Brian Pillman Jr. and Dante Martin. And of the of top flight and so yeah we had the Darby Allens open challenge to the Dark Order next week which was John Silver so yeah Darby Allen versus John Silver for the TNT Championship and we have the AEW World Championship Eliminator match so it's going to be AEW World Champion Kenny Omega with Don Callis versus Matt Seidel with Mike Seidel so the AEW World Championship Eliminator match. And so, yeah. And then, so 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 apparently he beat Mike Michael Nakazawa. Matt Seidel did to get a, a opportunity against Omega. And then we had Nala Rose. We have Nala Rose with Vicky Guerrero versus Ty Conchi. And that's next week. And so, yeah, that's next week's show for Dynamite. More matches will be announced. And so, yeah, right after that, we had our main event, which was the best match on the show for me. And it was the lights out. It was unsanctioned lights out match. And it was Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, with Rebel in our, in our corner versus Thunder Rosa. And so, yeah, they, they absolutely killed each other in this match, man. And so, yeah, we had Rebel. She hit Thunder Rosa with a crutch from behind. And then Baker, she, she hit a tope. She hit a tope. And tope suicida turned into a spear on Thunder Rosa outside the ring. And then we had Baker, she had an air raid crash on the ramp to Rosa. And then Rosa, she threw, at one point, she threw a chair at Baker's face. And then she hit Baker with the chair over and over and over again. And then, we, you know, they were fighting in the crowd. And then at one point, we had Britt Baker, she she stomped Rosa's, Thunder Rosa's head into the steel steps. And then, you know, at that point, Thunder Rosa, she's bleeding from the forehead. And, you know, they were going back and forth. 
We had a superplex to Thunder Rosa on a pile of chairs. So, yeah, chairs were involved in the match. They had a pile of chairs in the ring. And so we had Britt Baker. She had a, a superplex on Rosa on the chairs. And so Rosa, she kicked out. And then Rebel, she had sl slid in a ladder for Britt Baker to use. And so, yeah, but Thunder Rosa, she ended up getting the ladder. And so she pinned the ladder into Baker, who was in the corner. And so Thunder Rosa, she had hit a drop kick on the ladder into Baker's face. And so at that point, Britt Baker, she's bleeding. And so, yeah. And then, yeah. So Rosa, she was biting at Baker's forehead. And then, you know, Baker, she had a super kick on Rosa. And then she had a flat line on Rosa on the ladder. And then we had Rosa, she hit the Death Valley driver on Baker on the ladder from the second rope. And then Baker, she kicked out. And then we had a chair that was set up in the ring. And then Baker, she had a DDT to Rosa on that chair. And so, yeah. And then Baker, she had a curb stomp on Rosa on the chair. Oh, that was a wicked, a wicked stomp. A wicked curb stomp from Baker. And so Rosa, she kicked out of that. And then, you know, while, while Baker, she was bleeding the entire match, they had the camera. The camera had zoomed in on her face. And you saw her smile. She was smiling while the blood was dripping all over her face. So I, I thought that was really cool, man. It, it reminded me of the Becky Lynch stuff when she was bleeding from her nose and she was smiling into the camera. It reminded me of that. And so, yeah. And then, yeah, Rebel, she tried to get involved. And then Rosa, she had grabbed the crutch from Rebel and she hit Rebel with the crutch. And then, yeah, she had drop kicked Rebel from the ring apron. And then she knocked that through the table. So she went through the tables and the table broke. And then, yeah. And then, yeah, we had Rosa. She powerbomb Britt Baker. So, yeah, so first off, Britt Baker, she had brought out thumbtacks. She had brought a bag. It was a black bag. And so the commentators, they was like, what is that? What is that? What's in the bag? Like, dude, you know good and well was in the bag. It was thumbtacks. We know it's thumbtacks. Thumbtacks were in the bag. So she rolled out the, she poured out the thumbtacks that was out of the bag. And so it's all over the ring. And so, yeah, Thunder Rosa, she powerbombed Baker on the thumbtacks. And so Baker, she kicked out. And then Baker, she had locked in the lockjaw on Rosa. And so, yeah, this I love this spot, too. You know, Thunder Rosa, she had rolled, you know, to get out of the move, she had rolled Britt Baker on the thumbtacks to break, you know, to break the hole. So Britt Baker, she had thumbtacks in her back. She had more thumbtacks into her back because Thunder Rosa had rolled her through the thumbtacks to get her, you know, get herself out of the move. So, yeah, I thought that was really cool. And so to end the match, we had Thunder Rosa. She hit her finishing move, the fire thunder driver through the table. So she was on a ring apron and she had Britt Baker up in a fireman's carry position. And she just jumped off the ring apron and gave her a, a fire thunder driver through the table that was outside the ring. And so the table was broken and she goes for the cover outside the ring for the one, two, three. And that was it. And Thunder Rosa, she wins the match. And I'm assuming she's next in line for the AEW Women's Championship. If so... Take the title off of Sheeta and put the championship on Thunder Rosa, man. Because she deserves it, man. Either Britt Baker or Thunder Rosa, man. Give the title to Thunder Rosa, man. Because she deserves it. And so, yeah. Absolutely love this match. It was the best match on the show for me. Better than any other match on this show. The the This match was the best match on the show, man. And so, yeah. Just like what I said, man. They absolutely, absolutely killed each other, man. Great, great charm from these ladies. And so, yeah. That was it, man. That was it with the main event. So, yeah, good show. Very good show from Dynamite. Wasn't a perfect show, but it was a good show. And so, yeah, that's the, that's the end of the review of AEW Dynamite for March 17, 2021. And if you like this video, man, what are you waiting for, man? Hit the thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And right next to that subscribe button, there's a bell. Make sure you turn on that bell for all notifications. So you'll be the first one to know when my next video will come out. Comment down below. Tell me how you felt about this episode of AEW Dynamite. And yeah, share this video. Share this video with each and every single person that you come across on a day-to-day -day basis. And yeah, man. And I'll see you guys on Thursday. Thursday or Friday for NXT. So yeah, I'll be watching NXT. And I'll review NXT. So it'll be out either on Thursday or Friday. And on Sunday. Sunday for Fastlane. I almost forgot, almost forgot that there was was a pay-per-view on Sunday. 
But yeah, man, that's it with that. And if you missed my last week's review of AEW Dynamite, the video is going to be right up here. Right up here. And once again, guys, thank you for the support. Oh, yeah, and follow me on Twitter at Ryan Awesome Show. And yeah, man. And once again, guys, thank you for the support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And yeah, man. And this has been the Ryan Awesome Show. Take care. Stay safe. And that's that.